breaking news right now on CBS 2 News at 6 p.m. Up in flames, fire tears through a Santa Clarita area apartment complex, burning at least one building and threatening nearly a dozen others. CBS 2's Stu Mundell and Sky 2 have been over the firefight all afternoon. He joins us now with a live update. Stu? Well, right now, this is the way it looks. They're starting to do their mop-up, but I know we have some tape from earlier on when those flames are right up on these apartments. We know three apartments were damaged, at least damaged out here this afternoon. Third alarm fire was happening out here in the Santa Clarita area. We also saw a very dramatic moments when a sheriff's deputy was actually kicking in a door, trying to make entry into one of the apartments where the fire was on the roof, just to make sure that there was nobody inside. Now, as this fire was burning out here, Eventually, the numbers are right about 10 acres. They actually closed down a portion of Newhall uh, Avenue from Sierra all the way over to Dockweiler. The apartment complex called the Terrace, uh, Terrace Apartment out here in the Santa Clarita area right off of Via Del Oro. This was the area that was burning earlier this afternoon. L.A. County Fire battling it from the air. They had actually an L.A. City Fire helicopter join the fight dropping waters. Now, these flames were very well entrenched and very very, very close to homes. In the end, we're hearing no injuries to any firefighters, no injuries to any civilians. As it stands right now, containment still at zero, but the flames really have gone away. The fire department out here doing what's called mop-up, and of course, they've released all of the aerial assets, meaning the helicopters have left the area. So that means LA County Fire, they have a solid handle on this fire that was happening out here in the Santa Cruz area. Live in Sky 2, Stu Mandel, back to you in the studio. All right, Stu, thank you. Glad to hear that they do have that uh, under control, and it is definitely, well, just about out. Mop up underway. That's good news. Unfortunately, that is just one of many fires burning across the state tonight. Four firefighters have died, four civilians as well, and another seven civilians are missing. Nearly 1,000 homes and buildings have burned, and 15,000 more are threatened. The biggest and worst of the state's 17 fires are burning up north. The worst is the car fire, C A R R, in Redding. Cal Fire says nearly 100,000 acres have burned there. More than 1,100 homes and buildings have been damaged or destroyed, and another 5,000 are threatened. The car fire exploded late last week, trapping victims in their homes. Officials say they issued evacuation orders. Ed Bledsoe, who lost his wife and two great-grandchildren in the fire, says he had no warning the flames were coming when he left his family behind to run an errand. We had no idea. Nobody told us nothing. If I'd had any kind of warning, I'd have never, ever left my family in that house. I'd have made them go with me. Bledsoe says his wife and grandkids called him begging for help, but he couldn't get back to them, so he stayed on the phone with them until the phone line went dead. Near Yosemite, the Ferguson fire has claimed the life of a second firefighter. Hotshot Brian Hughes died yesterday when he was hit by a falling tree. The Mendocino complex fire is actually two fires burning near each other in Lake and Mendocino counties. One evacuee says she had a family member lose a home to a wildfire several years ago, and she doesn't want to be next. It's horrible. My daughter lost her home in the Valley Fire almost three years ago. And so, you know, it's pretty traumatic. The two fires combined have burned more than 55,000 acres. They are threatening 10,000 homes and have already destroyed six. The Cranston fire in Idlewild burned homes too, and one of those houses belonged to an elderly woman with no relatives living nearby. CBS 2's Nicole Comstock shows us how friends and strangers are coming to the rescue. Right here. Fast moving flames gutted this cabin along Highway 74 during the first night of the Cranston fire. Amazing. Susan Dunn knew she was watching her home burn on TV when she saw the Mountain Center sign. She had seen it out of her window for 18 years. Got it good, but you know, it didn't get all of it. It didn't get the pump house. The 67 year old had just returned home from having eye surgery last Wednesday when the Cranston fire forced her and her husband to evacuate. <sighs> I first thought of a shovel. I have a little shovel from Grandma Frances. <laughs> It's the sentimental losses that hurt the most, but now more than ever. They're wonderful. It's the thought that counts. 
I just wanted to put myself out there that I could take in livestock, animals, people, whatever. Deanna Womack welcomed the Duns into her home in Paris. They were strangers before last week. It made me feel a little bit better that I could help her and that someone was okay. Jessica John thought Dunn was a stranger as well when she met her in Paris to drop off donations. She immediately realized she'd grown up with her family in this small town now ravaged by fire. And then of course it broke my heart because that was her home and nobody nobody deserved that. Dunn's was one of seven homes destroyed and four more damaged by the Cranston fire. She's thankful they all made it out alive. Take it day to day, step at a time. Now the Duns literally have to start over from scratch. So if you would like to help them do that, we have a link on our website. Reporting from Paris, Nicole Comstock, CBS 2 News. Now back to our breaking news. Our Dave Lopez is on the ground of that brush fire that spread to an apartment complex in Santa Clarita. Dave? Get ready. Well, Pat, we've walked down the riverbed here. We just want to give you a real up-close shot of... Uh, we want to show you a real up close shot of what this looks like. You can see a number of firefighters up on the rooftop there. As far as we've been able to confirm, uh, no one was trapped inside those apartment units. That is what we're getting from three different sources that we've asked. Most of the people, as we were walking up Del Oro, we kept asking people if you live in those complex, and they said no. Most of those people uh, were uh, were not home. So we don't, we're, we cannot be positive, but for them, we're fairly certain that uh, no one was trapped inside. There are no reports of any fatalities or anyone burned by this. Uh, you can see just how fast this, uh, this fire spread. We have some video of just how close the call was. And uh, it was just an absolutely remarkable job on the part of the firefighters uh, to keep this apartment unit from completely going up in flames. Because there was moments, as you look at this video, undoubtedly that you thought that there was no way in the world they were going to beat back these flames. But somehow they did. There is a virtual army of firefighters up here. They are spraying water in every which direction, making sure that this doesn't flare up again. And again, from what we've been able to weed out information, there was no one trapped in those units off of Del Oro. No one has been reported missing and no one is injured, but of course it's still a little early in the game. And you can just see just how widespread this was. No indication as to how this started, but I've been told that they are looking at it as it could be a suspicious fire. It started a little before, a little after three o'clock, I'm told, and as you can see by what we had from our chopper, just how quickly it, it flared. Fortunately, the winds have not been blowing in any real heavy directions. In fact, it's very, very calm right now. And uh, it's just a, 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 a moment right now. The, the, the main goal is just to make sure there's no flare-ups. Uh, I'm sure they'll be going through all those units one by one to make sure that no one is trapped inside. So again, the news here is fairly good. Uh, it looks awful, but uh, as far as we can tell, no one lost their lives. Reporting live from uh, Newhall, I'm Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. Okay, Dave Lopez, thanks for that. Yeah, we will certainly take the good news. And Garth, we were talking earlier about uh, you saying that there didn't appear to be any wind and just heard uh, Dave Lopez say, or the Dave Lopez say that they're looking into um, the how this fire started. Could be suspicious. That's too bad. Yeah, there's about eight mile an hour winds. It, it fluctuates, but that's something different from what we're used to seeing up there. I saw one of the firefighters. Look like he was getting or he rescued an animal. Thank goodness. 83 degrees. Winds are calm up by the fires right now. 96 degrees. Humidity at 23 percent. So it's dry up there. Dew point above that 50 percent threshold. Feels a little sticky, but it's not very humid up there. And those winds have been blowing in out of the south, southwest, anywhere between five miles and 10 miles an hour, which is not very much, but it's there. And you can see still hot everywhere right now not super bad certainly not like not what we saw last week but we do have a sea breeze working from oxnard all the way up and down the coast that has helped the coastal plain yet again for us 112 out towards palm springs lancaster coming in at 98. coming up in a little bit we'll talk about our forecast we have no watches no warnings obviously as always we say it all year long treat this entire area as if you're under a red flag warning it seems like it's always fire season here in southern california full forecast coming up in a little bit pat all right, thanks, Garth. Well, there is new information today in the allegations of sexual misconduct against CBS chairman Leslie Moonves. Today, the board of directors of the company met, and CBS 2's Crystal Cruz joins us live from the newsroom now with more on what happened, Crystal. Hi, Pat. This was a regularly scheduled meeting for the board, but it came after accusations of misconduct against Moonves were printed in a New Yorker article on Friday. Six women accuse Moonves of sexual misconduct. According to an article in The New Yorker, the claims span a period from 1985 to 2006. Four say they were forcibly touched or kissed. 
The CBS chairman and CEO denies or says he doesn't remember many of the details in the report, but did say in a statement there were times decades ago when I may have made some women uncomfortable by making advances. Those were mistakes and I regret them immensely. But Moonves says he has always understood no means no and says he has never misused his position to harm or hinder anyone's career. CBS says its board of directors is in the process of selecting outside counsel to conduct an independent investigation. Some of you may be aware of what's been going on in my life for the last few days. On her show, The Talk, Moonbez's wife, Julie Chen, referred people to her tweet three days ago where she said, I have known my husband, Leslie Moonvez since the late 90s, and I've been married to him for almost 14 years. Leslie is a good man and a loving father, devoted husband, and inspiring corporate leader. He has always been a kind, decent, and moral human being. I fully support my husband and stand behind him and his statement. I issued the one and only statement I will ever make on this topic on Twitter. And I will stand by that statement today, tomorrow, forever. And the board also said it will delay its 2018 annual meeting of stockholders. That was supposed to be held August 10th. A new date has yet to be determined. Pat, back to you. All right, thank you for that, Crystal. Developing news now at 6, an accused deadly dater puts on a show in court as prosecutors from the East Coast to the West Coast add to the list of murders and other crimes he's accused of committing. LeBron James gets school. The Lakers' newest star opens his very own public school. Plus, the billionaire part owner of the Lakers talks to our Jim Hill about LeBron, the team, and the secret to success. Hey everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. Dog days of summer roll on. Your forecast coming up. And a live look from Sky 2 of the damage a brush fire did to a Santa Clarita apartment complex. Stu Mandel will have an update for us next.